it's been a long while since I've been called Mr. Rogers, and I thought my dad was getting up on stage for a minute. <laughs> um, guys, um, before I start my presentation, I might just give you some context about, um, you know, where I'm from, from a, uh, and what perspective I'm bringing to this. Um, there'll be some slides in here that overlap with what some of the previous presenters have covered, so I'll just go through that fairly quickly and just focus on, in particular, around some of the cultural elements. So I'm part of AsiaLink business. Um, AsiaLink is an organisation that was set up about 25 years ago to help support Australia engaging with Asia. Uh, traditionally, it's had a background more in sort of the, in the education and arts sector, and in more recent times, yeah, it's involved its activities in, in business and supporting Austra Australian businesses that's looking to engage with Asia. So that could be both outbound in an export sense, but also inbound uh, in terms of tourism and education and so forth. Um, we work along, so one of the obvious questions that I normally get asked is, well, how do we, you know, fit in with the likes of Austrade and, you know, Victorian government initiatives and so forth. And, and what I, the, what normally um, our programs are intended to be complementary to that. Um, we work alongside of those organisations. Um, we might be involved in certain aspects of trade missions in terms of, you know, preparing people or doing some of the post-trade mission activities. Um, as I mentioned, some of these... Some of this information has already been covered. I, I think everyone understands the, the, the landscape that is Malaysia. Um, you know, there's some interesting things. I just want to highlight a couple of things there. You know, in terms of ease of doing business, that's a really important consideration. Um, you know, AsiaLink business uh, is involved in various parts of Asia. Um, and to me, you know, there's, there's always... Sorry. Thank you. Um, you know, markets like China get a lot of attention but in terms of ease of doing business, you know, China would be a very complex market to tackle, whereas you know, markets like Malaysia is far easier to navigate. There's been a bit of discussion around you know, the middle class of Malaysia. Um, and I just want to highlight a couple of things. And I, I think Jenny mentioned this, that you know, it's been a transformational um, step in terms of the growth of middle class. And the figure that astounded me was, uh, and this is a, uh, an academic definition, of, but absolute poverty levels have declined from 49%, so you know, nearly half the country, to around 1% in 2014. So that, that just shows you f the mammoth level of transformation, but also the, the time period in that transformation. Um, I think there were some discussions around the Malaysian government's initiatives to really ramp up um, the growth of the middle class. And I'll probably just touch on the last point. So Ernst and Young, in, their, in a recent study, have highlighted that they expect that middle class to double in the next decade. Um, there's been a lot of discussions around, you know, what Brand Australia is and how it can help support this. So, again, I won't go through that. I think, you know, for most part, it's self-explanatory. Um, it was really great to hear discussions around food security and, 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 and in particular how Australia is perceived, in, you know, if perceived favourably in that regard. So from, from a cultural standpoint, why is culture important? Um, and I won't give you all of the science behind this other than there's been considerable research done that understanding culture helps create more successful business relationships. And that's not just in, a, in an Asia context, it's, it's across the globe. Um, it, it, having said that, it's important not to stereotise what culture is. And, and in particular, um, it's important to understand in a, in a country like Malaysia, which it has different ethnic groups, but also it has different generational groups as well. Um, there was a figure, I think, that again, Jenny raised with regards to the number of the alumni um, of uh, who have studied in Australia, and I think if you look at you know in particular the number of Malaysians that get educated in Western countries, that number will be quite significant, and hence culturally a lot of those Malaysians are going to be more Western in style or have a, a hybrid you know culture. But notwithstanding that, I think it's important to understand you know what Malaysian culture is and ha how to you know in interact in an effective way. I said I won't go too much into the science, but um, so when we do our programs around cultural intelligence, we use this tool. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a spiderweb diagram. It's based around some research that was done 
in the, in the early 90s, it breaks down culture into 12 dimensions, and it's, the dimensions aren't important. The important part when you, to, to understand culture, firstly, is to understand your own style. So normally someone who does one of these programs with us will do an assessment on how they are as a, as a, you know, in terms of how their behaviours and how they interact with people. And then you can benchmark that relative to other cultures. So in this particular tool, it has 70 different countries. So the, this particular diagram shows what a typical Australian it would look like relative to uh, a typical Malay. Now, the, the, again, the important point here is that it doesn't necessarily mean one is right and one's wrong. It's just more highlights areas of differences. And so... I thought for today's exercise, I might pick three areas where there are some differences, and if, if you could keep my qualification at the start in mind about the generalisation, I'll just talk through some of those areas of differences. So communication, and, and those of you who've dealt with Asia would have probably come across the term face and saving face, and communication embodies that. Um, and in particular, in a Western style communication, it tends to be a lot more direct, it tends to be a lot more factual, it tends to be based around you know, direct feedback. Um, and, and it almost becomes instinctive. Um, when we interact on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't even think about that style, it happens naturally. In an Eastern culture, and Malaysia very much fits into that, uh, into that domain, it's a lot more about the subtleties. Um, it's about you know how things are expressed and the and what is not said that you need to, you know to translate. And in particular, it's also important to recognise that you know saying no is is a is a quite a challenging concept. So it's important when you know, so some of the tips and I'll, I'll hopefully people in the back can read some of those. Um, but I'll, you know, firstly being courteous and being polite and being respectful. That, I mean that's a that's a given. In conversations, you know, take time to read body language and, and, and in particular think about the choice of words that are being used in, in discussions because quite often they present, you know, powerful clues as to what the real motives are. Um, if you need to disagree, and in business negotiations you will have lots of, you know, need to have different points or express different points of view, think about your timing, in particular think about you know, whether you can do that in a way that doesn't embarrass someone in front of a, a larger group of people. Um, again, it's fairly obvious, but that, that's a really important thing, in particular, you know, if, if you are about to point out something where there's an error of judgment on the other part or that, that potentially, you know, could cause loss of face, um, that, that could be detrimental to a longer-term relationship. So... Conflict is, again, very closely related to communication. Um, and, and I mentioned previously that, you know, that in a Western culture, it is quite factual, fact-driven. Um, you know, it's, it's black and white. Um, in, in, in a culture like Malaysia, or in, in an Eastern culture, you know, it, it is important to recognise, and, and it's sometimes persuasion and the way you express things um, tend to be far more valuable. Um, so those influencing skills rather than those factual or you know, um, direct dialogue is, is, is critical. And then the final one I want to highlight is around responsibility or hierarchy. Um, so in a, in a, in a Western style, it, it, it tends to be a lot more you know, collegial. You know, Organisation org charts and things like that are less significant, and and quite often there's empowerment, you know, right the way down an org chart. Typically, in an Eastern culture, decision making is 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 preserved for those higher up in the in the org chart. So, it's it's important to understand that. What does that mean for you in terms of doing business? It's important to understand firstly how do you get to those people, how do you influence those people, so you do. You need to in, you know, engage with people who are not decision makers but have an influence over those decision makers. Um, also, it's important to, to ensure that you know, in giving 
uh, where you, there's disagreement or where, where you need to um, negotiate, that you don't seem to denigrate those people who have got that you know, decision-making authority. So I won't dwell any more on culture, but, but it's, it's, it is an important you know, attribute for success in business. Um, so I thought I might leave you with some tips, and, and this sort of you know, adds to some of the advice that's already been given to, to you from other presenters. Um, take time to learn the culture, um, and, and that will also give you clues in terms of how you market your product, um, you know, who you deal with, um, and it'll give you an understanding of you know, how to build effective long-term relationships. Um, take time to understand market dynamics. And I spoke to some people who, you know, who have been dealing in the, in the Malaysian market for quite some time, and I asked them, "What advice can I share with you?" And and that taking time to understand market dynamics is a critical one. Understand, you know, what makes you know the market tick, um, the supply chain nuances, um, you know, the, the various you know uh, legacy factors that have contributed to why the market is the way it is, and also try and anticipate what, what the market's doing going forward. What are the trends? What are the, the, the likely things that may change in the medium term? Oops. Um, get to know your supply chain, and in particular, you know, make sure that you understand what your strengths are and who can complement those gaps that you have you know, in that regard. So um, there was some, there's a presentation talking about you know, uh, consolidating and working with you know, giving scale and also access into that market. And if that's how that's the model that works for you, then that's you know, understand that and make sure you work with that. Doing due diligence. Um, you know, this is not just in Malaysia, but you'll find that in in various markets, there are a lot of people who make representations about their networks, their capabilities, um, you know, their uh, ability to get things done. You know, um, the recommendation for you is absolutely validate that. Make sure that what, what's being stated is, is in fact can be backed up. And then the final one is, is be patient. Um, you know, this is not a, you know, it's not an, it won't be an overnight success. Um, it goes back to that, you know, the early points Make sure you you, know, you, un you invest the time to un you know, understand you know, the soft areas like culture, but also some of the more tangible areas like the the, the market, the supply chain. Thank you.